part four of told under a white oak tree this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Chuck Williamson. Told under a white oak tree, by Bill Hart's Pinto Pony, and William S. Hart. Part four. Well, in a few days, the boss he come and got me and took me down to the cars, and we started. We was going up into the country. What Bill likes snore or some name like that anyhow it's in the foothills of the sarah's mountains i'm wrong on that name but i'm doing the best i can on names well our first morning in snore we started out gee it was a pretty country bill he told me it was the place where all the gold came from what paid for the civil war what my great-great-grandfather fought in we found our river all right and then i heard we was to get the water stuff for two stories sand and the toll gate and sand come first i had to jump off a cliff into a river while a feller on the other bank was shooting at us of course the boss he was on my back and he sends me back out of range and he dives under the water fooling the feller what's doing the shootin makin him think he's dead and the feller goes away and the boss he comes up him not bein hit at all and follows the feller and gets him and i being lonesome for the boss i swim over by myself and follow him course that's all in the story when we gets all ready the boss he says boys i'm going to take the little feller in first and see if he can swim if i jump him off that cliff and he couldn't swim it would be curtains for him right here i had my fun with all the boys standing round i wouldn't even look at the river much less get my feet wet no siree the boss he tried and tried but i'd shy away every time then the boss he got down and commenced to scold me and i said look here bill i ain't wishful to cause no trouble but i'm afraid that water will give me a cold in the head but pretty soon the boss his voice got soft again and i knew it was all off i had my fun anyhow and when he got on me i almost jumped from under him getting into that river i just played round in there because i loved it and when we came out the boss he kind of glared at the boys and said swim that hoss has got web feet i ain't going to talk none about going off that cliff when the boss took me up there and i looked down i felt about as warm as a gas stove in winter with the heat turned off i just shut my eyes when we went and when we came up from under half the water in the state of california was i glad gee the boss slid off me to see if i was all right and i played round and splashed water on him to show him i was i like wet anyhow things too dry ain't no good no how if you walk on a dry board it squeaks we soon got all our water stuff for what i described to you afore for the sand story because it was just play for me i was just delighted in swimming high to show em how expert i was if we hadn't been way under before the boss wouldn't have been wet above his knees then we went to our toll gate location what they had picked out the day afore and believe me they were some pickers it was a hole a tunnel or a sewer right through the mountain you can call it what you like but that is what it was it was about seventy-five feet or a hundred yards long 
there was an overhanging cave where you went in and the same where you came out and then it just narrowed down to a hole just room for a horse to swim and a man to sit on him and not bump his head on the ceiling it was about six feet wide at the water level and all through it water was dripping down in a little stream out of the rocks bill he looked at it a long long time longer than i ever see him look at any stunt before then he said any ledges in there under water to upset a house and joe the cameraman he said i took off my clothes and went through there yesterday on some plank slashed together and i sounded all the way through with a pole it averages eight feet deep except in one place where there's a hole about forty feet long where i couldn't touch bottom at all and bill said deepness don't matter none but do you strike any ledges getting out of the hole joe he said he didn't think so but he went through fast account of the current and wasn't sure then the boss he thought a long time again and then he turned to the boys and made em a little talk there wasn't any joking or kidding now they was some serious-looking bunch of cow waddies you bet boys said bill this will be great for the story if we can get it in the story this tunnel is the entrance to an outlaw's cave and there's none of us got to go through and carry pine knot torches in our free hand so joe can set up at the other end and have light to photograph us coming through now you all got hosses as can swim but if anyone wants to say no they are free to do it and no hard feelings there was a little pause and then wolf verunda the engine he spoke up and said wherever you go bill is good enough for us and bill he said thanks boys get ready the boys all got off and did likewise because a hoss can't swim free if he's cinched too tight and if he gets in trouble it's good-bye sweetheart good-bye when bill got on me and we was all ready bill turned to the boys again and said boys come single file and eight feet apart and no matter what happens don't move a man or a hoss until me and paint is the other side of that hole what joe says is about fifty feet from this here end be sure about that boys cause it looks to me like a tough job the boys they agreed and bill and me started golly that water was cold and we was going against the current wow it was cold but i swum all right and pretty soon we hit a place where the water didn't hit me so hard but it kind of pulled me down and round whirligigs and i knowed we was in the deep place but i was swimming strong and easy and away on the other end i could see joe on a ledge of rocks grinding his camera he didn't look no bigger than a speck and then all at once something happens that made me feel like death my front feet hit a ledge of rock under the water and i couldn't find nothing behind to climb on right there i seen it coming you know we hosses can scent danger and see our finish quicker than a man and i tried to climb i tried i tried oh god how i tried right there i could see me a drownin the boss my boss what no matter how he ever jawed me his eyes always looked at me so kind and they're as blue as a robin's eggs i got my front legs way up and the boss he was quarter riding off on one side to steady me but i had nothing under me but that whirlpool of water a suckin me down i struggled and struggled but it wasn't 
any good and then i put everything i had into a mighty leap but i couldn't make it it couldn't be done and over i come right on the boss him staying right with me the boss has told me since then never to breathe under water but i didn't know it then and as we went down and down i just kicked and lunged i was strangling when we come up the boss was still with me how i didn't strike him and kick him to death i don't know but there he was with his hand through his cheek strap trying to get my head above the water oh i am plumb ashamed of myself now when i think of it i plumb lost my head i was crazy i was facing the wall when we come up and i tried to climb up it the surface of the wall was rough and i just dug into it and climbed like a wild hoss that i was until i come over backwards on the boss again because the top of the tunnel was just like a half circle down we went again and this time i felt the boss and knowed i had kicked him because i didn't feel him any more but i know he'll never hold it against me cause i was dying i felt all kinds of things and there was an awful roaring in my head and i know i couldn't move fast any more but i kept struggling and by and by i come up again the boss he wasn't there but just in a second he come up too about ten feet away from me i looked at him and tried to say good-bye and i made a sound the boss says i looked at him appealing like and called to him anyhow he didn't try to get out himself he came to me again and he got me by the head and said god help us partner i'm afraid this is the finish and that's what made me say a little while back that there is a god and you bet there is too because as the boss talked to me i got quiet and looked at him just keeping my feet going to keep afloat and the boss said oh and he has never talked to me like this before or since he didn't seem to be talking it seemed to come right out of his heart he said steady pain steady i ain't a going to leave you old man if we go we'll go together take it easy that's the boy that's the boy easy easy work this way pardner work this way and then all at once i knowed that he was turning me around and then i seen the light where we had come in and the lot of figures there what looked like spirits and then the boss said again now old man come ahead come ahead and i felt he was going toward the light but i couldn't see much i seemed to be going blind but i kept my feet working and all at once i felt a lot of hands grab me and i was outside and i felt awful sick all over but i see the boss laying stretched out on the rocks and i pushed through all the boys and tried to nose him and then a terrible dizziness came over me and i felt like everyone was going round and round and i was fallen and a whole lot of hands grabbed me again and the boss was bracing their bodies up against me and they let me down easy aside the boss i knowed he was there because the last thing i can remember before everything went dark and the sun stopped shining was putting my head on him like we always did when we rolled on the ground and played a long time after that i heard the boy saying it was ours 
I seen the light again, and the boys was all standing around, and the boss, he was down on his knees beside my head, and what do you think he was doing? Doggone, if he wasn't washing my mouth out with water and a sponge. Just like I hadn't had enough of water. I got mad right there, and the boss said, let him up, let him up, and up I come. And the matter I got, the boss just kept laughing and laughing and doing a regular engine dance. And then he just hollered, there's laughing this old boy yet. And then he put his arms around me and hugged me tight and started to wipe his eyes again. So how the dickens could I stay mad? I just said to him, keep your undershirt on, Bill. It's cold. The West is a big country, and there's all kinds of jobs for all kinds of men. And we was making pictures, and we had to make them, so everyone held a powwow. And it was decided we would climb over the mountain and go down to the other end of the tunnel and all back in. And Joe could set up just outside and grind on us coming out and with a cut to the interior of the outlaw's cave, to cover where me and the boss went down to where we come out, we could get away with it. This is sort of giving the picture game away to you, Kate, and you too, Mule. But when you've worked in em as long as I have, you'll find there's plenty of heroics and stunts, without talking about something what ain't. And speaking of stunts, the trip over that mountain, about a quarter of a mile up straight, and the same distance, down straight, wasn't no picnic neither. I was pretty weak, and the boss, he walked and stayed with me, because I needed help a little bit, and we had some fun watching some of the other stock-taken headers. Of course, they couldn't help it, because it would take a mountain goat to keep his feet. What's that you say, Mule? Why didn't the boys come in and help us when we was drowning or throw us a rope? Why, you poor specimen of mule flesh, didn't I explain to you that the deep hole was fifty feet from the entrance, and the only thing excepting God what saved our lives was that we was the only two in it, with me kicking and thrashing round? And you locoed fool, if you knowed anything about a rope, you'd know a cowpuncher can't throw a rope fifty feet on a straight line in a hole six feet across and not more than that high in the middle. I reckon the only man you ever seen throw a rope was down a well with a bucket on the end of it. <sighs> but the sun's getting low, and it ain't too hot now. Let's go over by the house and steal some more leaves off Bill's peach trees. And if he hollers, leave them to me. There's no bonds like heart bonds. Come ahead. The End End of Part 4 End of Told Under a White Oak Tree by Bill Hart's Pinto Pony and William S. Hart. Read by Chuck Williamson, Columbus, Ohio, 2012.